All right, pre-AP biology, this is the second part uh, of this video on the origin of life. I believe in the, the last video we kind of got cut off a little bit, so we're going to start back on this slide again. Uh, but again, I want to re reintroduce you to this term paleontologist. Again, a paleontologist is somebody who studies fossils. And a fossil, again, is any trace of an ancient organism. It could be bones, it could be feathers. Um, you know, typically the soft tissue does not fossilize unless it's like a rare, rare occurrence. It's usually the hard things that fossilize, nails, again, teeth, feathers, bones. Uh, footprints as well are considered fossils. But again, the fossil record, the fossil record is basically all of the fossils that we've ever found. We're talking millions and millions of fossils. And each fossil is kind of like a piece to a puzzle. You know, kind of showing us how living things have evolved over millions of years of time. You know, the more fossils that we uncover, uh, the better picture we can get, uh, again, of how living things have, have changed and how living things have evolved. You know, just some examples here of, of fossils. Here are some footprints uh, that are in Africa. These are in a place called Lytoli in Africa, and they, um, they're, they're actually some of the oldest footprints of human ancestors and you know we can actually uh, uh, learn a lot from an actual fossilized footprint uh, we can tell about you know the posture of the individual how the individual walked even possibly how big the organism was uh, or how tall the organism was depending on the strides uh, of, of the steps of each footprint so there's a lot of things we can actually tell from just looking at an actual footprint, but that is an actual fossil. Um, this is called amber. Amber is basically frozen tree sap. Um, on the inside here, there's a, you know, a little mosquito or dragonfly or whatever that is, but it's been perfectly preserved. You know, for whatever reason, that insect either died or flew into that tree sap, and then it hardened to form uh, amber. Uh, and inside, I mean, there's a pretty much perfectly preserved organism. If you've ever seen Jurassic Park, this is kind of fictional, but you know, this was how they extracted the dinosaur DNA. They had like a mosquito that was preserved in amber and whatever. They use it to make the dinosaurs, but you know, that can't really happen, can it? I don't know. Anyway, uh, this is a, an example of a, of a prehistoric fish. You know, a, a lot of these fossils that we found are, are organisms that are, are no longer here. You know, they are extinct organisms. You know, this thing here, it's called a trilobite. It's an extinct organism. Uh, same thing here. You know, this thing, I don't know what this is, but uh, it was here at one time. You know, it had like a couple flippers on the end of its tail. You know, it definitely has a head. You know, if you even look closely, it has kind of a backbone or a nerve cord going through its it's back, so this is probably some chordate or some ancestor of chordates, but kind of a bizarre organism. But again, this thing was here at one time and it is no longer here. So uh, you know, either it went extinct or you know, it evolved into to something else. Um, the fossil record, again, all of these fossils that we've, that we've ever found, you know, they, they, they do occur in a particular order. You know, some fossils are older than others, some are younger than others. Uh, some fossils occur in more recent rock, which tells us that they're younger. Some occur in more older rock, which tells you that they're older. Um, one thing, though, that we have, have really learned about the fossil record, or from the fossil record, is that, hold on, Pledge of Allegiance is coming up, so I'm going to take a break here. Thing that we that things that we've learned from the fossil record is that most of the of the things that we have found to be fossils of uh, those are extinct organisms. In fact, ninety nine percent of all the species of life on Earth have gone extinct. You know that's what the fossil record has told us. You know there, there's not very many fossils out there of organisms that are currently walking the planet today. 
you know, um, this is not the case. Uh, but a lot of the things that we have found are of extinct organisms. Now, how do fossils form? Again, one thing to remember is that not everything will fossilize. Just because something dies doesn't mean that it will actually fossilize. In order for something to fossilize, conditions have to be kind of perfect. Uh, and fossils are always found in a certain type of rock called sedimentary rock. Now, this is basically what I mean by sedimentary rock. So let's say that we have a fish, for example, that dies in a river or a stream, and it sinks to the bottom. And over time, you know, it, it gets buried in sediment, which is basically just, you know, the dirt particles that are floating in the, in, in the water. But over time, it gets buried in sediment and, and, and all the flesh and all the, the meat, you know, all that stuff will just be decomposed by bacteria. But the hard stuff, the bones, for example, will still remain. So, again, over thousands and millions of years, you know, that sediment builds up and builds up and builds up. And perchance, possibly, this river will dry up. If the river dries up, you know, for whatever reasons, a drought or whatever, then that sedimentary rock at the bottom of the river will now be exposed. And when it gets exposed, I'm going to show you a picture here real quick. This is what it looks like. Now, this is sedimentary rock that at one time was underneath water, either in the ocean or in a prehistoric lake or a river or whatever. And all of these layers that you see are just different layers of sediment that have been built up over time. All right, now we actually have two different ways to date fossils. One of them is called relative dating. And this is kind of easy because uh, you know relative dating is, is just basically just dating the fossil based on where it is you know, in the strata of the rock. You know, basically look at it this way. The deeper the fossil, the older it is. So if you've got, let's say, 10 fossils all layered together, one on top of the other one, the one at the top will be the youngest fossil. The one at the bottom will be the oldest fossil. So that's called relative dating. You're just dating fossils based on their depth within the Earth's crust. Now, the other type of dating is called radioactive dating. And radioactive dating is a lot more accurate. Here we use some chemistry techniques, which I'm not gonna get into in this class. You'll learn about this next year in, in chemistry. Uh, but we use half-lives of elements, for example, and radioactive isotopes to determine uh, the age of rocks and the fossils that are within those rocks. You know, this particular dating method is extremely accurate. You know, when they say, for example, that a fossil is 5.2 million years old, you know, and, they, and they, they dated that based on radioactive dating techniques, then that fossil is most likely a, right around that age, um, you know, give or take, you know, maybe a couple hundred years. But, um, you know, they're, they're fairly accurate if you think about, you know, time, you know, in millions of years. It's a pretty accurate thing. So carbon dating, it's also known as radioactive dating. Just understand the difference between that and relative dating. They are different. Carbon dating is much more accurate. All right, guys, that's it for the videos. Have a good day, and I will see you soon.